Okay, so let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining the live streams. Um, to join the live streams, to submit your art for critique, all of that, go to istabrak.com and click on the subreddit icon here. This is where I'll post the holiday challenge that's coming up. There's a challenge every year around the Christmas time. Um, so that'll, that'll be up very soon. And all of these links are here for your convenience. Uh, so please do like and subscribe if you, if you have the time. I also stream on Twitch. So I stream on YouTube and Twitch with Restream. So I split stream now. It's working just fine, thank God. But to join my Discord, and my Discord is actually a really, really great place to meet people just like you, people who are like-minded about everything in life, really. Um, and uh, it starts with art. So this is like your art community right here. But this is a study I'm working on at the moment, and it's a combination of no reference and two different references. Um, and I submit these to my patrons um, on Patreon uh, for the $10 and $20 tier. And I do a whole time-lapse video of everything that goes into what it's like working from reference, working without reference, the process, my techniques, when I use specific techniques. I just pretty much break down and dissect everything I do. And this is the format of my Patreon. Um, so if you guys want to learn passively, it's not too much commitment. Um, you get a Discord that sends out all kinds of assignments every month. Um, you get a final assignment that uh, is like a paint over. Um, I critique every piece you post. I submit all the art that I do, all my personal work along with PSDs and brushes. So it's like a reward system, but also you get lots of educational material. Um, so it's like joining private tutoring, but a lot more relaxed. Um, but you still get homework, you still get assignments. Um, so if you are interested, please join me on, on uh, my Patreon. It's also on my website. The link is right here. And either a $10 or $20 patron, they both get the time-lapse videos and PSDs. Um, but one of the biggest things about working with reference is learning to trust your reference. Fundamental number one about studying from references is trust your reference. Write that back to me. So a lot of you think that you could reinvent the wheel. A lot of you want to do things um, in uh, kind of using reference, but not really bringing your own twist to things, doing your own little um, stylistic choices. And you, you really don't have any business making stylized choices at this stage in your art, at this stage in your, in your skill development. So what happens, what ends up happening is you, you suffer, you suffer a great deal. So what I'm going to do is just level these two together and then just crop down just so we can at least have some kind of similarity between the two. You are allowed to trace, please, please, for the love of God, trace, because what it's going to do is help you trust your reference. When you trace, you start seeing patterns, all right? So what are, what's, what are the fundamentals we've learned so far? To trust your reference, okay? I don't know what that was. Okay, to trace your reference, all right? Trace it, learn it, learn it, study it. Just like a botanist studies a plant, just like a biologist studies um, a, a, an animal or whatever, or a human body or whatever it might be, just like a doctor studies a disease under the microscope. You, a student of visual physics, of the physics of a photograph, of the, the physics of light, light physics, light on form, you must dissect your subject. This is your subject under the microscope. Please, for the love of Pete, I don't know who Pete is, but please trace. Part three is limit some of the information. Okay, so we're going to basically go through all of these um, and apply the corrections, all right? So I'm just going to pretend I'm one of you guys and I'm just taking all of these pieces of advice and, and applying them. So limit information. When we limit information, it's all kinds of ways. Why do we limit information? Why? Because a camera is too much information. A camera sees more. Okay? A camera sees more than the human eye does. We don't need all of these details here. We don't need all of this. We don't even need this sharpness. We don't need much of this. We definitely need this. So when we limit our information, it allows us to create a better focal point. So the focal point, oops, focal point benefits. Also, 
it helps with the technique. It helps make things easier. It makes the process easier, right? Easier process. So <clears throat> what are some ways we can limit the information that we're looking at? So what we can do, one big thing I always recommend is to edit the reference, all right? So many, many things we can do. First one is to blur the reference. Blur it until it is no longer overwhelming you with that data that it's providing. When we blur the reference, we only see what's really important, right? Now my brush stroke isn't panicked. Now I, I know where the biggest blocks are. There's a block right there. There's a, hold on, there's a block right over here. Let me take a look at that. Okay, there's another beautiful block just there. There's another really important block just over here for the top of the nose. So this stage helps you process a lot of the early stages of the, of the painting, all right, when you're working with reference. The biggest question is why do we study references? Because you can't stay in the no reference zone for too long. We stay in the no reference zone for beginners because we don't want them to learn how to paint every face just yet or unique faces. We just want them to learn how to paint a face, something that looks similar to a face. Um, look at this sexy block right there. Damn, right? And so all of these blocks we know are high fidelity. We know that they are representing a real true source of information, but we also know that they are not detrimental. Um, in that they're providing too much information. We know the informi information that they're providing is reliable information, all right? Because we know the source of it is here. But when we unblur, look at that data, like look at how much information is in this overload of data, right? Too much data for a student who's just trying to study faces, got a good reference with a good angle. All right, so another way to limit your reference is to use mosaic or any other kind of thing that um, pixelate, where are you? Pixelate and uh, mosaic. And this helps give you a less uh, blurry limit to the information. So you're still seeing the face, but you're seeing something like a smaller selection of blocks here and there compared to here where it's showing you where to blend. This is showing you where to kind of limit blending but also it's just a less blurry way for those who want to do a painterly version, not a polished version. All right, there's also um, artistic, um, where is it, filter, artistic palette knife. Um, I don't know why it's like this. Stroke size. Um, Softness. I don't know if it's going to like destroy my computer, but stroke detail. There we go. Um, this is also really cool. All right. It also helps you limit information. So you can focus mostly on what your brush stroke should look like, really. So this, this, and this. All right. And then there's another way to edit your reference. If for, for some reason the reference is looking forward, you guys get distracted by the pupil and iris. Get rid of the pupil and iris. There are so many other ways to limit the information in your, in your painting, but I can't go through them all right now. But there's the biggest way, which is the most important. It's connected to a fundamental, which is grayscaling your reference and grayscaling your photo. Um, uh, it's our, your, your piece, your, your, your painting. And we do this because you are processing a lot of information from here to here. Any color that you're bringing along for the ride, you can't deal with it just yet. Imagine something for me right now. So we've got, this is the destination for where your eyes are looking, and this is the starting point. And there's a darting. You lose a lot of information in this dart period where your eyes are traveling, Travel time means data loss. Write that back to me. So while your eyes are traveling between your reference and your piece, there's tons of data loss. The better you are as an artist, the less data loss you have. Everybody following? 
Everybody here, everybody in the back, can you hear me? Everybody's good? Um, I'm drafting a complaint for it. Okay, so in this travel time, imagine that the, the, the more newbie an artist, it's the, the less you have in your, in the back of your truck, all right? So this is like a pro artist, and the noob artist is like a small little vehicle with a little wagon on it, and, and you know, just, it's just too, it's got a little, it's too small for you, and you're just trying to ride this, this little wagon attached to a baby car, whereas a pro is an 18-wheeler, full full commodities i don't know rv <laughs> i don't know okay so there's only so much information you can pack in here three blocks and you guys are tired but over here a pro can fit blocks colors patterns textures um, where to blend where not to blend so in this travel period you have less capacity you have less load capacity so when you add color to the mix you're just adding a big freaking thing right here in your little car wagon and um and you're you're not gonna have a good time you're gonna either drop it drop some other stuff you're gonna be confused you're gonna dart back more so you are taking on way more than you should be so another way to help you process the information you're looking at is this exact layout put the reference beside your piece don't put it somewhere far away. Don't put it in the other room and then get up and look at it and come back. I don't know where you guys are putting your references. Maybe you are doing this, but you're just uploading it disconnected. I don't know. But this is also going to help you retain information. This is going to limit the processing time, the travel time between you and your reference. Everyone, every, mine is a bicycle. <laughs> Some people only have whatever they're holding in their hands but it's okay because every pro was once super newbie and they get good just by doing it more all right i had it to the side but not directly like that so yeah you don't want to limit the amount of of distance you have the more professional you are i mean you could be on a canvas drawing and the model could be here it could be a real life model it could be a small little drawing attached to um, or a reference attached to the top of your canvas, but because you guys are still, you know, they're dealing with digital and this is very convenient, honestly, I do this if I could. I just feel like it's too close for me. I like mine on another monitor, just off to the side, but your references, because you guys are still learning and because it's better for teaching, I'm keeping it here. All right, so now that we did all that, we can see a great deal of the mistakes you made, but let me talk about those patterns I mentioned earlier. Do you see this pattern, this straight line, and another straight line, and another straight line? All right, we see a really nice straight line pattern just here. Lots of straight lines. And we look over to yours, and you don't have that defined straight line. You kind of did something else with it. For me, I feel like the trend lines, which are different from the tracing lines, the trend lines are the focal point wherever this whole setup right here this cool looking blocking pattern right here this is what we need to have on this side you can even sketch it out if you wanted to you are literally sketching out where these parameters will go everything else outside of those is practically shadow <clears throat> take a look at the parameters I just outlined. Even the lower part of the cheek is shadow. So technically, it doesn't look like this, it looks like this. All right. So you can see how you had too much light here, way too much light up here. You don't really have a defined block here and the shadow of the forehead is not there because the light is hitting this way. <clears throat> All right. So you so in order when you are approach this logically and break down the information verbally before you even pick up the brush stroke. By the time you get to the brush stroke, you're so much more prepared, right? Um, and that's the point of today is that you guys need to know how to process the information you're looking at, how to process all of this stuff. Let me just take a drink one second. hauling data for mine. <laughs> um, so actually let's 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 do the paint over. 
Enjoy the blocking process. So what did I say? I said all levels, all artists from every level at this stage in the painting process, their art looks the same. So if you're panicking, thinking my art looks weird right now, um, don't panic because it's supposed to look like this. All right. So write that back to me. It's supposed to look like this. So before, all right, after, before, after. Um, so trusting your reference helps you uh, use the blocking brush with more confidence. If you use the blocking brush, you start thinking about the cube. When you think about the cube, everything else falls into place. So thank you everyone for watching today. Thank you to all those who come out to the live streams. If you can, please do join us on the live stream. It's really fun. Um, uh, but if you can't, that's okay. I submit all of my videos to YouTube. The full length videos, today's class was an hour. Um, that is only going to be available for patrons, but it's not an expensive tier. It's just the $1 tier. So if you have time, please stop and support me on Patreon for just a dollar. I've been teaching for 10 years, teaching content just like this for 10 years, saturated content. And all I've ever asked for recently in the last year and a half or so is just to support me for a dollar on Patreon. It goes a really, really long way if everybody joins. I know you may say the next guy will do it, but I want everybody on board if you guys can take the time. If you want to get to know more about my process, my techniques, how I describe them, my personal work, and get assignments, please join me on Patreon as an apprentice or the tiers in between. There's five, ten, uh, one, five, ten, and twenty dollars. Please join us on our Discord community. It's on the community tab on my website, isabrak.com, right here. And today you saw me use a lot of my brushes, um, just jumping across, so that these are all my brushes right here. Um, sketching, dry oil, skin and blending, smudging, and the pack. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next Tuesday, if my health allows, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And... Um, uh, uh, if you guys keep an eye out on the Discord community, um, sorry, on the, on the Discord, but on the subreddit community, so go to istabrak.com and click on the subreddit to get your work critiqued, but also to watch out for the community challenge that's coming up for the holidays. It may be a texture challenge, it may be a book cover, I'm still thinking about it, most likely will be a book cover, but it's something fun, and, um, and with a little fun twist to it. Uh, but yeah, today I picked a piece that I believe was submitted either to Discord or subreddit, but either or I pick pieces to critique from either of those. But anyways, I'll see you guys next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye!